This is Alex Hare on Golden Days Radio, and my studio guest is a household name in Melbourne. His voice is uh, recognised and would be recognised by most of our listeners. It's none other than Peter Smith. Peter, welcome to Golden Days. Thank you very much. By golly, Alex, Sunday night, and here you are sitting there in a tuxedo it <laughs> takes me back to my abc days exactly for goodness sake well, we have to dress up well back in those days of course prior to my joining the abc back in the i think it, they ran out of this in about the mid 50s perhaps a little earlier the abc night shift announcers were required to wear dinner suits yes i've they got sat, some photos right well they yeah. sat there in their dinner suits very much along the lines of the bbc yeah as you will readily know, and perhaps some of your listeners will, though they were unseen by the uh, the public at large, except for perhaps a, a church group, a studio tour that would come through that I would conduct as uh, part of my messenger boy duties at the right. time, and uh, yeah, they were very, uh, very dapper in those days. So that leads me to the question, you started at the ABC, that was your first sojourn into radio? Started as a messenger boy at the ABC. In uh, um, Broadcast House? In Broadcast, dear old Broadcast House and Waverley Court, uh, the home of Radio Australia, of course, for so many years. Yep. It's all gone now, as I yep. see those big High Court or Supreme Court buildings that they've uh, put on the site. Right. But it was for many years, yes, as you say, the voice of uh, not only the home service of the ABC, but also Radio Australia. Mm. It had the bomb-proof uh, studio shelter there, right on the corner of uh, William and Lonsdale Street, yep. Studio 305, as it was. Yes. And I remember in my time there, when I finally got on the air after badgering them and... Uh, Getting Keith Glover, dear Keith, who's a great friend of mine, Keith, to uh, look after me, and he became my mentor in later years, still is. I can remember badgering him to uh, use the facilities down there in Studio 305, as they weren't being used at the time. Right. And uh, they did a lot of news broadcasts during the war, of course, from yeah. down there. Yes. Because it was indeed a bomb-proof shelter, and though it may sound uh, far-fetched now... When Darwin was uh, under attack and uh, the Japanese mini-subs came into Sydney Harbour, mm. everyone thought Melbourne wasn't too far away. Yeah, I can imagine. And Must that being scary. the voice of Radio Australia <laughs> and the voice of, uh, well, the free world, really, yep. into Asia and, in fact, indeed, to North America and the British Isles, it was considered to be perhaps one of the targets. Certainly the transmitters were. Yes, yes. Um, now... Okay, so you're there as a messenger boy. How long were you sort of in that role before you made the move to a DJ? Uh, I think I must have been there for uh, four or more years doing messenger boy duties. And, Good of course, heavens. in those days, the I don't know about now, but the ABC by charter was required to hold announcing auditions regularly, mm. perhaps every six months, whatever. But by charter, I don't know whether it's still true, but since it's become a uh, corporation... But the commission was required to hold announcing auditions. So anybody who wanted to become an announcer, a would-be announcer, would uh, apply for an audition. And uh, I did that time after time after time. And the thing that brought me undone in my callow youth was the fact that, I, well, I had no formal training. I had a little radio station under the house at Kew. Didn't we all? The likes of Philip Brady and uh, <laughs> Mike Walsh and Jim Murphy and people like that. Perhaps only names to your listeners, but, well, some of them quite became kicked on and Indeed. became quite famous. Indeed. But uh, yes, we used to play radio stations, even though perhaps only one or two kids were hooked up on uh, bell wire across the fences, but <laughs> we thought it was pretty, uh, pretty, you know, crash yep. hot. Yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, so in those days, I only had that sort of experience with uh, no training, as I say, no formal training, and uh, it was required by the ABC that you pronounce uh, foreign names mm -hmm. in those days. Mm. So, in fact, uh, composers like... Uh, it wasn't good enough to say Tchaikovsky, it was Tchaikovsky, and it wasn't good enough to say Dvorak, even though it was spelt D-V-O-R-A-K, it was Vorjak. Mm. Well, it took me a long time to get the hang of that, and by the time I got on the air, in fact, they had... Uh, well, anglicised the pronunciations and they'd really dropped much of the, uh, you know, they had a new regime ca came in and uh, they wanted the English pronunciation. So it wasn't so bad. Yes. And finally, after, as I say, all that badgering, I was able to uh, get on the air, first uh, under the, uh, the mentorship, if I can put it that way, of Keith Glover, who did the sporting panel, and that was a very intricate sort of an afternoon to handle. How he did it, I don't know. Mm. And I was sort of the, uh, the young... Offsider, who did the bits and pieces, finally got on the air, and uh, yes, I was there for eight years. Wow! Into the uh, television part as well, of course, because with the ABC, 
Yes, in those days, uh, I, being the young fellow, did a few hit parades and things. There were no personalities. There were very few personalities. There would be people like Eric Child who did jazz programs. I don't yeah, do that's right. Eric, I don't know if he's still around, but uh, Russ Tyson, who used to do a national breakfast session and hospital half hour hmm. out of Brisbane. Yes. That was networked. That was in the days before anybody knew the word network. Uh, and I did the hit parades. And in fact, my most enduring memories were doing pop shows, as they were then, the 10 top tunes of the week or whatever, with uh, a 26-piece orchestra, as it was with the ABC Melbourne Dance Band. I mean, can you imagine a radio station having its own uh, dance band or orchestra now? Not now. Not now. Not even a television station has their own orchestra anymore, but they did in those days, of course, as you'll recall, with Frank Thorne conducting and Jim Gussie's uh, band in Sydney. They all made a lot of recordings in those days, too, which... uh, you know, we hope to include on a new CD uh, shortly. The Australian dance band scene will be covered uh, on a new Bill Armstrong project, which we're uh, looking at at the moment. Good man. Yeah, mm. that'll be great. Mm. Now, listen, speaking of Bill Armstrong projects, let's have a break from the chat for a minute. I've got this wonderful double CD here, Pete Smith Specialties. Now, yes. whenever I hear that name, I think of the MGM Shorts. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's rather a good play on words, but this is the Great British Dance Bands, The 30s, Volume 1. And the, 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 the actual reason that I'm associated with the British Dance Bands is simply through a love of that sort of music. Mm-hmm. When I was first able to buy my first 78s for my wind-up gramophone, the records I bought, or sometimes in second-hand shops and so forth, were very often uh, British recordings, yep. and not just dance bands, but people like George Formby and yes. uh, all those sort of the big British names. And of course, uh, it was an era uh, that was so sensational to my ears and remains so today that uh, I thought, never mind your Benny Goodmans and your Jimmy Dorseys and your Glenn Millers, this was a totally different sound. Yeah. This was a totally different approach but everything with strict dance tempo. They're my favourites too. Mm. I love the British dance bands. I've got about 10,078s Oh, have you? I'll have to raid your place. Yeah, no problem at all. But uh, let's have a listen to one of the tracks, uh, and it's uh, Henry Hall with the BBC Dance Orchestra, and the music goes round and round. In words low down Now this is how the music goes round I blow through here The music goes round and around And it comes up here I push the first valve down The music goes down and around And it comes up here I push the middle valve down, the music goes down around below, 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 dilly ho ho ho, listen to the notes come out. I push the other valve down, the music goes round and around, oh, 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 and it comes out here. Blow through here, the 
music goes round and around. Oh, 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 oh. when it comes up here, I push the slide way out. The music goes round and about. Oh, 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 oh. when it comes up here, I push the slide way down. The music goes down around below, below, below. Dilly ho ho ho, listen to the jazz come out. I make the funniest sound. The music goes round and around. Oh, 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 oh and it comes out here. Well, how about that? The BBC Dance Orchestra, great sound, Henry Hall conducting. The music goes round and round. Peter, this uh, double CD is still available? Yes, it certainly is, very much available. And, uh, in fact, uh, I think Sonart put it out. Oh, yeah. Now. Yeah. That the yeah. people behind uh, Naxos. Right. Am I right in saying right. that? Yes. Yeah, they're being distributed, uh, Bill Armstrong's, uh, the, the Bill Armstrong collection, you know, all that wonderful smacker stuff. Yeah. I was down at Bill's the other day, and he's just working on a release of uh, a lot of smackers, his last live performances, which are stunning to hear. Yeah. And you can't believe the quality. It's just incredible, wonderful quality. But our double CD, the uh, British Ten Spans Volume 1, is still uh, alive and kicking, and we are just... Uh, very shortly, within the next month or so, we'll have out our volume two. That's exciting news. It's, it's wonderful, really, when you think about it, that you can put all those old 78s down onto two CDs. Now, I know you're a collector, mm. but you know how much tender love and care is required with looking after 78s. Oh, yes. And once you get them down onto a CD... You can virtually put it in your pocket, can't That's you? Put right. it in the car and That's take it. It's wonderful. It's re- it is. You and we've maintained, I think... The original sound, without any fooling around, as you know, there are many, many re-releases of 78s, but uh, through Bill's expertise, we've been able to maintain what we think is the original sound that you would have heard probably off the off the original shellac, probably better than what they heard on the original playback, better, which be- is incredible, Better, isn't it? because, of course, the English pressings are very surfacey. They Yes, we've tried to go for Australian pressings, pressings where possible. Pressings, because they're laminated and mm. uh, they're much sought after yeah. by collectors. Yeah. Now, so you've got a second uh, volume coming out, so um, uh, by before Christmas or ready for Christmas? Yes, or? we hope so, before Christmas, certainly. That's a good market, we'll, isn't uh, it? We'll let you know. We'll please, sing out from the rooftops. Yeah, please Alex, let me know, because I'll make sure yeah. our listeners know, because this is the sort of music that they love. Yep. Sure. Now, um, we're at the ABC. We've done some television for ABC. Um, you were at 3AK at one stage. What? Where did that come in? Was well, it was rather a wonderful opportunity to grow up in the ABC environment and uh, not only do the radio but the television. Because, you see, people do forget that when television first started... It was a very big deal, but for people who worked in radio and for those radio stations that owned a television station, such as, say, look, 3DB, for instance, on the commercial sphere. It was the Herald Sun station. They owned Channel 7, and if you were a newsreader there, uh, you were just uh, required as part of your shift. You'd pick up your roster, and uh, there it'd have, uh, you know, 9 a.m. news bulletins on 3DB till 3 p.m. Then you'd catch the tram down to Dorcas Street, and they'd have you down to read the, the 6 o'clock news or whatever it was mm. and in your own suit. Mm. Uh, it, <laughs> wasn't, uh, it wasn't perceived to be such a big deal. No. You were just rostered to do it. And mm. it was just on the end of your shift that you'd go down and read the 6 o'clock news. Right. That was it. Yes. And, of course, the emphasis, if you did read news in the days of dear Eric Pierce, <laughs> uh, the emphasis when you look at a news bulletin from those days, not that we've got them available in full but I mean the emphasis was really on the newsreader, it was really like radio with pictures, we didn't have lots of cutaways to moving pictures Mm. because the footage wasn't available, it just didn't exist, we didn't have satellites bringing things like war zones into your home night after night that we take for granted now, the man on the moon of course Mm. It was uh, a long way away. Mm. And so the emphasis was very much on that small medium shot or whatever you call it, the medium close-up of the newsreader, head and shoulders, carrying the whole 30-minute bulletin almost. Yes. With a few, if we were lucky, a few cutaways to... And, I mean, you can remember yourself going to the movies and seeing the Melbourne Cup rush to your screen at your Hoyt Suburban Theatre on the Thursday night. That was a huge deal after running on Tuesday. Mm. The film, the black and white film, was rushed to your theatre. 
and uh, they probably made half a dozen prints and motorbiked them all the way around Melbourne. That's right. In fact, in some outer suburban theatres on the Hoyt circuit, it went on at the end of the main feature, but it went on Thursday night. Mm. That was a big deal. Yeah. Now look at the way we take things for oh. granted. But I think I've got off the subject and led you up the garden path. That's Alex, okay. I'm sorry I'll about pull you that. back to AK. Yeah, well, I had the opportunity to uh, several times from dear Colin Bednall, the architect of the so-called variety star system at Channel 9, which still operates for them today in many ways, though the live uh, variety shows have long gone. I had uh, several overtures from Colin, who I thought was about to give up on me in the end, because I was saying no, a frightened little boy at the ABC, and enjoying what I was doing there, having the best of both worlds, Mm. uh, you know. Mm. But finally, I uh, was lured by the, uh, the fascination of that five nights a week live nighttime variety uh, flying by the seat of your pants doing the sort of stuff I'd missed out on in the vaudeville years I was too young which mm. I would love to have been able to do the Plaza Northcote and the, oh, yes. and uh, you know the Tiv and all that sort of thing they were my earliest days of being taken to the Tiv for a pantomime and then at a very young age I think 10 or 11 being taken to a night show and seeing the likes of Jim Gerald and George Wallace I think was on the bill one mm. night I saw him headlining and I did see Roy Reen Moe ah. it's uh, an enduring memory for me and of course the wonderful Tivoli Nudes I just uh, forgive me for my eyes are glazing over a little bit Alex I can see you're looking at me and it's not the sort of subject to talk about on Golden Days Radio on a Sunday night but I feel I have to say those nudes, your listeners will remember those wonderful, beautiful Tivoli nudes, those white bodies, absolutely stark as standing stock still, as you remember, by legislation, by the Attorney General's Department, Arthur Ryler, it was at the time, who'll ring a bell, I'm sure. Yes, he was also I to would. do with the tramways board, that's why I say ring a bell, but he was in those days in charge of that area, and by legislation, those nudes, if you recall, Alex. I know you won't admit to it. They could not move on the stage. They had to remain completely stock still. Very artistic it was, but they had to remain completely stock still. The ballet was allowed to move around them, of course, the ballet sequences, but they had to remain stock still. It was only in later years that the regulations were relaxed. The nudes were allowed to move, but the audience had to sit stock still. (laughs) Fair enough. Oh, memories, Alex. They come flooding back to me. So Colin Bednall was pursuing you, and you finally capitulated. Yes, I. well, more than that, I actually joined Channel 9 and 3AK. And oh, capitulated. I'm sorry. I'm just being a bit rude there. <laughs> yes, so I came over and uh, was part of the IMT team and doing the bits and pieces, which I'm still really doing today. Bits and pieces and mm. uh, the announcing as well. There were nine full-time booth announcers at Channel Nine in those days. Yes, because of course everything was live. Yeah, sort of radio with pictures in a way. Bruce would have been there. Was no, Bruce. Bruce. Bruce Mansfield? Mansfield? No, no, he wasn't there at that time, no. Sparks, he wouldn't have been there. It'd be a bit no, early, Ken Sparks was at 3UZ. That's but, right. Uh, no, he wasn't there. Oh. And, um, so nine, gee, that's a big roster for Yes, it was. Yes, for there, the isn't Bert it? and <coughs> Hal Todd and Jeff Cork oh, and myself Toddy. and dear Philip, of course, and Bert all took their turns. I came over when Bert uh, left. He uh, became, I think he had a breakdown, although they didn't say that at the time. Whatever he had, he wasn't well. Mm. I came over to a well, not replace him, but that's Fill when I came over. Thing, yeah. and I thought, yeah. well, I might be the new Bert Newton. Well, it never happened, but here, 38 years later, and I'm still, you know, doing the same thing. Um, Peter, uh, television or radio, what's your great love? Where's your first preference? If Well, I think radio by a long shot, yeah. because radio allows you to extend your imagination. It allows you to reach out and... You know, to be intimate with... Well, oh, not on a Sunday night, of course, Alex, after that uh, Tivoli talk. But it does allow you a communication with your listeners, uh, with your audience, that is n- would never be possible mm. with television. Mm. If there's an earthquake coming, if there's a waterfall, we can simulate it right here in the studio. Yes. Which I won't do now. I'm a gentleman, of course. But, I mean, it's just that sort of thing, the imagination. And... Uh, the fact that you are here at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night or into the evening playing uh, British dance bands, mm. we could be right there in the middle of a British dance band, couldn't we? With we Jack Hilton or Carol Gibbons or you name it. Yeah, yeah, we could. How long a stint did you have at AK? 
I stayed with AK. They, it, that was the good guy era. It's the good guy era. Yeah, I, used to, no well, I was sort of a part-time DJ, really, oh, yeah. Alex. I was only there on a Saturday afternoon. I had a thing called the Penthouse Party. Most of my work was at Channel 9, but because they owned the station, 3AK, I was able to become a good guy as well. Terrific. And that was in the era when we brought out the Beatles and... Uh, the Rolling Stones, and I can remember one memorable Saturday afternoon, we took the Rolling Stones out on Port Phillip Bay on a boat, on a launch, had them, we broadcast all afternoon from out there, without records and so forth, and chatting to them, all afternoon we had them out there. Can you imagine trapping the Rolling Stones today, mm. and taking them out on Port Phillip Bay for a radio show? It wouldn't show? happen. No, it would not. Um, Great memories there. Yeah, um, I was going to bring up something else now about... Uh, and I, it's just completely escaped my uh, memory. But was oh now I know what it was. Uh, was the three AK where no wrinklies flew? No, that came after that. That was after that the good after guys. That. I wasn't yeah, that sure. Came after the good guy era. Right. Went through a few transitions there. Through where no wrinklies fly, as you say. Yeah. And then it went into three uh, AK beautiful music. Right. AK beautiful music. There you go. I can remember listening in the early days of when 3 AK, because I think they broadcast only at night. Yes, at originally at when it was Max uh, Furniture Store, that That's right. the place in Grey Streets and Kilburn. That's right. Yeah. And I can remember listening to AK on the weekend, and they played uh, every song for this particular Saturday began with an A. Oh. The next week, every song began with a B. Oh, it was nice. it was weird programming, but it yeah. was interesting. But yeah. uh, I don't know where they got that idea. I thought maybe they're shorter records or something. But but uh, yeah, that, I always used to listen to them because it was, as you said, it was unusual. Might you, have been a bit amateurish in some way. Exactly. But uh, it was just something different about it. Do you remember a, a guy on there called Peter C? Yes, Peter C. Yeah, Peter yeah. Churchley, I think his name uh, was. Shelley, wasn't it, or something? Or oh, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. No, I do remember Peter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, remember uh, Peter Well, C. I use his theme. I do oh. a program called Latin Rendezvous, and his he used to use uh, Mr. Lucky with Henry Mancini, oh, yes. and he would segue into the Latin version of it. Right. Uh, and yeah. I used the Latin one for my yeah. Latin. In, in, and I always... Da, 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 yeah. Da. Uh, Wonderful uh, stuff. I Mancini always right. remember... Um, that pro- pro- program with Peter C on 3AK. All yeah, well, you ago. see, it was your formative years, Alex. Yeah. We were growing up. We were. And those sort of things made an impression on us, I yeah. think, don't you? Yeah. Particularly, uh, I had my own radio station at home too, and uh, uh, it was just a great love of, yeah. of radio. And uh, Now look at you. You've yeah. got your own radio station here now. Well, I wish. But um, so, uh, Peter... Um, Television uh, voiceover, does that keep you fairly busy these days? Yes, it does, mainly because I have to write all my own material. Ah. In those days, there was there might have been nine uh, announcers, but right. there was a copywriter and a typist and all yep. that sort of thing, yeah. a complete department. But now, as it's sort of scaled down into the fact that everything's recorded, of course, now, yes. nothing is live no. in that announcing area. No. Um, it's... You know, means there's only one person required. We, most of a lot of most of our promotions are made in Sydney, right? But uh, for the local voice, you know, the, yeah. the next on nine. So that's what my pr- little bag. does programming say? Okay, here's the list for yes, the next week right. or whatever. And what they, you know, we're, then we decide what we uh, are to promote, right? In much the same way as the uh, the big high powered video promotions. Yep, and uh, yeah, just goes along like that. So it's all virtually left to me. And you're stuck in a little booth somewhere. Recording away? Uh, yes, I spend a fair bit of my time in there doing that sort of thing, so it's, it wouldn't uh, do to have claustrophobia, would no, it? No, it certainly wouldn't, Peter. Well, look, uh, Peter, you've been a, an absolute uh, marvel giving me your time for this interview. I would, would have dre- I promise you, I would have dressed more oh. sedately <laughs> than you in that <laughs> You're sitting suit. here in a beautiful suit yourself. You. So, But uh, what we'll do is we'll finish up with a piece of music, and it's going to be El Boli, which is, has, happens to be one of my favourite singers and a song which is called Midnight the Stars and You Uh, but just again thank you so much on behalf of my listeners and uh, on behalf of all the members of Golden Days I know they'll be very very interested in what you've had to say you've given us a great insight into your career and may it continue for a long time into the future thanks a lot Alex thank you very much I'm just going to get the lady on the switchboard and she's going to partner me as we dance out of the Golden Days radio studio
stars at you Midnight and a rendezvous Your eyes held a message tender Saying I surrender all my love to you Midnight brought a sweet romance I know all my whole life through I'll be remembering me Whatever else I do Midnight 